Greetings, my name is Ryan Nitsch. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services, and I want to talk to you about migrating IBM DB2 databases to AWS. So a little bit of background context. Uh, I work with many customers that are either migrating into the cloud or they have a hybrid strategy and they are coming from an existing investment of IBM's DB2, whether that is a relational database or a, a data warehouse infrastructure, and that is their current on-premises environment. So they have something that is DB2 related on-premises with a desire to migrate that into the cloud, AWS being the destination that I most commonly see. Now, many of the customers that I work with, they might already have a DB2 investment that's running as a virtual machine. It might be a hardware, a sort of appliance platform. That DB2 infrastructure could be a, a server-based licensing model where it's running on top of a virtual machine. So they could, for example, have a, a server on-premises and that could literally be DB2 server. Likewise, that might be a containerized version of DB2. Maybe they're using some sort of cloud pack infrastructure like cloud pack for data and there is DB2 running as a containerized workload on top of, say, OpenShift. So that could, for example, be a container platform supporting uh, DB2. So when we talk about migrating to AWS, how do I take the database, the database configuration settings, the data, everything that is at database, and, and migrate us onto AWS? One of the things that we found that can speed things up is first identifying what is the target. Now for customers moving to AWS, they have quite a few options over here. They could take that server-based DB2 implementation and simply do a lift and shift to AWS. So literally, this could be EC2 instances on AWS and we could be lifting and shifting the server-based version of DB2, uh, and that could be a uh, procurement of a new subscription through AWS Marketplace or a bring your own existing license to AWS. Uh, more recently, we have seen an uptick of databases that are being containerized for portability, and DB2 can run on top of AWS's EKS, and DB2 can also run on top of the Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS Rosa. Both of these will obviously have the containerized version of a DB2. Uh, we do have customers who are running their own self-managed OpenShift environment, so yes, we do have self-managed OCP as a container workload. This is just another version of Red Hat OpenShift. Only difference now the customer manages it themselves. Uh, we could also have customers who are working with something like a IBM Cloud Pack. Uh, cloud Pack for data, Cloud Pack for automation, Cloud Pack for, you know, various Cloud Packs do have a database component and that database component could be uh, DB2 under the hood. And then, of course, uh, in, the, in the future, we may see other options manifesting here as well. And whether this is a container-based version or whether it is a server version, at the very least, customers need to migrate the data settings, the data configurations, the data objects. But for customers who are making a decision to move to a containerized version, how do I actually go through the process of containerizing a database? All of these factors slow customers down when it comes to migration. So what IBM have done is IBM have created a product that customers can use to help through this process. Essentially what we have is customers can use a very simple tool called Click 
Containerize. Now, Click to Containerize is an add-on module. It is part of DB2, so if you're running DB2 server or if you're running the Containerize version of DB2, Click to Containerize is already inside DB2. It's a tool that you just need to utilize. Uh, Click to Containerize connects back to a source database so you would connect it to your on-premises or wherever your source database is you then go into click containerize and you create a target that target could be a ec2 instance if you just want to lift and shift the database or if it is a containerized workload something like eks or open shift Click to Containerize can connect to that Kubernetes environment and actually build out the underlying Kubernetes objects. So before we get overly excited, let's go and have a look at what are some of the things that Click to Containerize can migrate. Uh, Click to Containerize can deal with a variety of different things here. Firstly, uh, irrespective of what the database is being used for, this could be a columnar a database that is being used for analytics workloads, high performance search, this could be a more traditional uh, row-based data storage service for a relational database in a retail context. Uh, it can be utilized for online transactional processing databases, online analytical. It can even go and migrate encrypted data storage. What is awesome about this is the migration can be done either in real time. So if I'm able to connect to my source and my destination, I have the ability to do direct migrations in real time. Or if I'm in, a, say, a public sector context where there is something that is more sensitive or I'm in a disconnected state, I can connect to the source, dump that migration down, onto something like external storage or a disconnected environment, and then I can replay that migration into my target if they are disconnected. So air-gapped deployments are also possible, and this is super important for my public sector customers. If we have a look at what in these databases click to containerize can migrate, uh, it can do the actual settings of the database itself. So configurations of the database engine can be recreated inside the container platform itself or a server-based version. The actual objects of the database. So the database itself, the schema structure, but also external things like functions, stored procedures, uh, code that sits peripherally to the database in itself, those can be recreated. The data inside the actual database, this is the largest sort of payload. And this is where being able to actually interact with that encrypted source and recreate that as an encrypted destination. This is what I would expect from any database migration tool. Click to Containerize takes it one step further though. And if I target a Kubernetes type platform like OpenShift or EKS, Click to Containerize will actually create the containers that my database is ultimately going to go and reside in. It'll actually automate the process of containerizing my relational database if I've not already done so. So it literally creates the Kubernetes objects required for migrating. And as you can see, this can greatly accelerate a migration of an existing data, a DB2 environment in an on-premises context to AWS and give me a variety of options depending on what my business's requirements are. Do take some time and go and take further exploration of IBM's Click to Containerize. Thank you for joining us.